Hey guys, I just thought I'd uh, touch base with you a little bit. I haven't posted anything in a while. Um, the reason I haven't is because I broke my ankle a few weeks ago, and we have had snow almost nonstop for more than two months. Um, so I've been hobbling around on a broken ankle, shoveling snow almost nonstop. Um, but I wanted to uh, share with you a little project that I'd done about a year ago, and I thought I should probably document this and uh, share with other people who could benefit from it. It's not an idea that I came up with, so I want to be perfectly clear if someone says, hey, that was my idea, you're probably right. I saw it from a guy on an uh, air gun forum. Um, what it is is a uh, patch puller to clean the barrel of an air gun. Now, I know that a lot of people will say, well, you can you buy air gun, or uh, it can buy a gun barrel cleaner and rods and stuff from any store, but uh, air guns are a little bit different because they have uh, often a breech seal at the end, and it's a rubber o-ring or silicone or something like that, and you have to be really careful with it because if you use a standard firearm uh, barrel cleaner, uh, bore brush, they're usually uh, brass or have bristles in them that are so coarse they'll scratch that breech seal. So um, what I did was I I saw a guy online, some other guy came up with this, and I copied his design, made some changes, and some, I think improvements. But um, I think it's a really good idea, and it's really simple, and anyone can do it for not very much money. So to give you an idea of what I'm talking about, let me uh, show you what the breech seal looks like. And the example that I have, it's actually on the bolt. So in this one, you actually could use a regular uh, bore uh, rod to clean out the barrel, but you'll see what I mean. Um, let, me let me stop this, and I'll turn it around in just a moment. So this is what I came up with. It uses some standard paracord. I got this at uh, Ace Hardware locally. It's nothing fancy, just some paracord looped over on itself. And it's, I sealed it in some shrink tubing and a little piece of PEX tubing. I cut some holes in it and then tied a knot on the inside so that I can pull it back out. So what you do is you push this down the barrel until it comes out down here. You put a patch on it, wet the patch with some solvent cleaner, and then you pull it all the way back through the barrel. It's pretty simple, pretty straightforward, but uh, I don't think anyone else is selling these things commercially, at least not for air guns. Okay, this is my 22 Benjamin Maximus, and you'll notice if I open up the bolt, you can see right there on the bolt, there is a little black O-ring. It's kind of hard to get this in focus, but I'll try there. And that is what seals up the uh, barrel. So whenever the uh, trigger is pulled, it, the hammer releases the valve and the air rushes in and pushes the pellet down the barrel. On the Marauder, the breech seal is actually right at the lead end to the barrel. And it runs around the inside of it. A lot of people use their gun and don't even know that there's a, a seal there. Um, that thing will get worn and eventually you'll start getting blowback past that seal and you start to lose power in your gun. You have to replace it every now and then. Some people go so far as to replace it every time they clean their barrel. Um, I don't know that that's completely necessary, but, you know, O-rings are cheap. It's, there's nothing, certainly nothing wrong with replacing it every time. But uh, I just thought I'd point out where it is on most guns. But my point was that if you run a, a bore brush down there to clean it from a standard firearm, they're meant to scrub out all of the... Uh, gunpowder and all of the other debris from a firearm, you don't have that in an air gun. However, you do have this soft rubber breech seal, and if you push a bore brush through there that has you know brass wires on it, it'll scratch the bejesus out of that, so you have to be careful. Okay, so the things you need, you're going to need some paracord. As you can tell, it turns into a big knotted mess if you foolishly unravel it, as I have done. You need some shrink tubing. Shrink tubing can be bought at electronic stores, it's usually used for wires, but in this case, it, uh, all it is is a tube that's just a little bit bigger than the diameter of the, uh, the string we're going to use. And when you heat it up, it shrinks. PEX tubing, this is the stuff you get at the hardware store, or Lowe's, Home Depot, wherever. It's, uh, it comes in white, blue, or red, or clear, I guess, actually. It's kind of an opaque white. But the, uh, this works really well for, um, for this purpose. You just kind of cut off a length and sculpt it to what you need. I found that some PVC pipe cutters works really well for cutting it. Um, I'm gonna do a little bit of work with a uh, regular utility knife and 
a little kind of simple drill here with I believe it's a uh, eighth inch I believe uh, drill bit I think is what it is I don't remember off the top of my head but you get the idea a little bit bigger than whatever the string is okay first thing we have to do is figure out how much string we need that's pretty straightforward you find the gun that you want to model this on put a little bit down at the breech stretch down the end of the barrel hold that spot on your left hand and then we're going to pull it back because we want to double up the amount of string so you have twice as much as you think you need now we're going to add we're going to kind of just pull it a little bit add a couple of inches extra because we're going to have to tie a knot at the end and we want to leave enough that we can have a loop at the end like this okay so we're going to pull our string until we get to the end right there grab the utility knife and cut it off so now we have a length of string that's twice as long as we need next thing we want to do is we want to melt the ends of this because it'll fray if we don't do something about that so we're going to use a lighter melt it heat it up until it starts to melt just kind of mat it down I like to wet my fingers with some spit just so it don't burn my fingertips what can I say I'm a little bit of a pansy anyway there's our full length of string all right next we want to get our shrink tubing and we want to make sure it is the same length, actually a little bit shorter than what we need for the, uh, the bore string. So we're going to grab the shrink tubing and pull it up along with our string until we get to about, what is that, about two and a half, three inches from the end. Set the shrink tubing aside. Now we're going to take the folded end of our string. This is the part that gets kind of tricky. And we have to get it through here somehow. And if you're lucky, you can very gently push it. And it'll actually go all the way through and come out the other end. What you may need to do, though, if you mess this up, is uh, you grab a piece of string a single length of string, feed it through here, tie it onto the loop, and then pull it back through. Okay, once you've gotten the, the string threaded through the shrink tubing, it should look something like this. You'll have maybe six inches, maybe, well, maybe a little less than that sticking out the end. Um, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to tie a knot at the end of this. Just kind of a double up knot. Nothing fancy. Easy peasy. Okay, next. We need to put a hole in our little piece of plastic tubing. Now we cut the plastic tubing off of a piece of PEX tubing earlier, if you, as you recall. I'm going to use a little tiny drill and I'm just going to hold it in between my legs while I drill it. Nothing big and fancy. I'll just pop it between my knees, uh, if I can get this down here or not. Doesn't take much. There's one hole. I'm going to put another one just a little bit off to the side here. Okay. There we go. Two holes. Of course, I dropped my little plastic tube. Okay, so next, back to the trusty uh, utility knife. We're going to take and the one that's closer to the end 
not the one in the middle, but the one that's closer to the other end, we're going to use the utility knife and widen it and make it big enough that that knot will fit through it. You may have to pull it a little bit. You may need a pair of pliers inside there to tug it through. But we're going to make it big enough that we can get the string in there. And then we're going to take the utility knife and we're going to cut from one hole to the other, from one hole down to the other, and cut a slit in the plastic. So once we get the string through there, we're going to pull the string through until it pops into the little hole, and then it's kind of locked in place. This becomes our handle to pull the bore string through. So I'm just going to whittle away on that. You don't need to watch this. Okay, next I've got my string pulled through. Got a little loop in the end. I'm going to try to get this through here. I'm not sure how well it's going to work. We'll see. Sometimes I've, uh, I've used a screwdriver. I also may need to make this a little bit bigger. I don't know. But mess around with that until you can get this through that hole. And then I will show you the next part. Okay, once you have that, that hole made big enough, kind of cut a keyhole. And then we'll fit the string through. Okay, so... And see it's in there. Okay, now the last the last piece of this project is we're going to take the shrink tubing, get about an inch of loop at the end, and then we're going to use a lighter to heat it up, and you'll see it start to shrink. It'll shrink more than you think it possibly can. Pretty impressive how much it shrinks, in fact. And go all the way down the length of the entire string. Eventually, we'll have a thin, semi rigid. Okay, that's it. We've got a little loop at the end. You put your patch on. The shrink tubing has been heated up until it shrunk around our string, all the way down the length of it. Our string is secured inside the handle. Now I'll show you how to use it. Again, this isn't rocket science. Feed it down the barrel. patch in here, put some solvent or cleaner on it, and then you just pull it back through all the way up the barrel and at the end. That's it. So as I said at the beginning of this, this wasn't my idea. I didn't invent this. I just kind of made some changes to it and I've been making a few of these, giving them to friends. Um, I now have several of these around. So uh, if you want one, give me your uh, contact information. You can text me or message me through the uh, messages. And I will try to get in touch with you, and we will uh, see if I can send this this one to you. This should work for uh, Maximus, uh, Discovery, probably the Marauder. I'm not sure if it's long enough for the Marauder or not. I'll have to check. But uh, I'll send this one, or if you have a different gun, maybe I can see if I can figure out how to make one for that. You can tell me how long it is. Maybe I can make one for that. But uh, I'll try to send one out to someone who watches this. Have a good one.